Hello nieces, hello nephews, it's your Uncle Charles here and welcome back to my YouTube channel where we do unbiased price action analysis. Holy moly, donut shop chat. Volatility is making trading, day trading great again. I am so, so, so happy, especially, you know, with the with election season approaching. Emotions are getting very high. The market's been moving up and down and around. And as a day trader, I'm just extremely happy that we are getting intraday movements. Okay, beautiful move, beautiful day trading for SPY, especially if you're a sheep. Look at this beautiful price. This is a 15-minute chart. This is what I use to trade. You know, I wrote in my Discord, first post of the day, 521 Fib level must clear to be bullish, putting the higher targets in play. You know, I wrote here, 521 defends, if 521 defends as resistant, 519.5 fail as support, 518, 516.5, and so on in play. Now, we look at what happened. I wrote that before the fact, okay? But look at what happened. This is the fact right here. Don't matter what the news say or your favorite YouTubers say, price action is the true shepherd. And you look here. First, the market at 9.30, 9.30 a.m., right? Got a little drop to the downside. Hit that 518 level, as you guys see. This pink, this pink line right here, let me change it to green. That's the 518 level. You see, it bounced off the 518 level. Cleared 519.5. Now, this, I didn't trust it, okay? To be bullish, I really needed to see 521 clear. As I mentioned this in the last video. I don't know if you guys recall. The reason why it was 521 was 61.8 fib levels. Critical level uh, is the golden level based on Fibonacci levels, okay? So I couldn't get really bullish until that level was recaptured. And boy, oh boy, look at that. Boom, it's a 15-minute chart, chat. 15-minute chart. Cleared it, 521. That yellow line right there, how do we know it's cleared? Because it closed above it on the 15-minute chart. The higher the time frame, the higher the conviction, okay? So as a day trader, I'm trying to go as low of a, a time frame as I can without going too low because those lower time frame, five minute, one minute, two minute, it, it really trappy and fakey, you know? So 15 minute chart or higher is what I recommend. You guys can see here, clear 521, right there. That's the one I trusted. I didn't, it was, this one was, you know, it, it, it wasn't the critical level. It was a minor level, but we cleared that critical one, 521. And then the next candle, the 10 o'clock candle, Treat it like support. You see resistant turn to support. And look at that. Boom. Beautiful move going as high as 529.75. Okay. Beautiful move to the upside. But what happened? Did we have the call atop? No, we didn't have the call atop because power hour came through. Power hour came through. We hit that 529.5 is level. Keep in mind that 529.5 is level was a Fibonacci level. All right, we're going to talk more about that level. But it hit that level, false breakout setup when we broke back below my 528 level. And look at that, beautiful move to the upside. Didn't even have to call a top. We just let it hit a critical level. If it's truly a rejection, break down support. Breaking down the next support is where we want to enter put. Beautiful. Level to level with runners. This is the kind of stuff I'm talking about with the whole trading like a sheep being unbiased. Because, you know, we're trading intraday. The market can, can go up or down. It can go sideways. So we're going to be open to any and all scenario and look to react. Unbiasedly, upside, downside, there's so many opportunities to make money in this market. And the only way you'll be able to see it is to be a sheep bah! and stay unbiased. Now let's get to the daily chart. Okay, let's get to the daily chart. Because, you know, small time frame is cool for the, for the short term. How about the daily chart? A little more macro, a little more, you know, we really want to go macro, we go weekly, monthly, you know, but just a little more to the daily chart. Getting bounces here for the last couple of days, we had this massive gap down on Monday, and you know, we get some people buying the dip, it appears, and you guys can also see where we got the wick, the sell zone, the selling pressure, right from that 50% Fibonacci level, which is also last Friday's buy zone so we're seeing a buy zone turn into a sell zone that is bearish price action combined with the fact that we are getting 
lower highs and lower lows since mid-July, okay? So there's that. Overall looking bearish. But does the Bulls have any hopes? A little bit. A little bit. Because what happened today? Well, the Bulls recaptured the 521 level, okay? So we had a crazy move to the downside in the mid-550s. Next thing you know, we gapped down all the way close to like around 510-ish low. We were bound to get a bounce, some type of relief bounce. You guys are familiar with dead cat bounces. Now, how do we know that this can be a dead cat bounce? Well, first thing we got to do is allow the bounce to play out, which it has, right? And once the bounce has, pl has played out, we got to see, okay, well, what critical levels did this bounce clear? And I'm telling you guys, it's 5 21 now clearing 521 today led to a nice beautiful move to the upside but it was only good for day trading because at the end of the day at power hour we got a sell off but some way somehow the bulls managed to get that close above 521 on the daily chart so if this is a dead cap bounce we'll know it is if one of two things happen if one we get a, tr a traditional breakdown of 521 intraday 15 30 minute chart one hour chart whatever you like we break down 521 because we cleared it yesterday. We break down 521 tomorrow. That's bearish. Why? Because it's a false breakout setup. Or in this context, it's a false recapture setup. Okay? AKA a dead cat bounce setup. And, and it's important to know what setup is what because is what? Because each different setup requires different reaction to it. And dead cat bounces require us to give a bearish reaction why because that's bearish price action behavior so the bottom line is because we cleared 521 today i would be bearish on spy tomorrow if we drop or gap down below 521 which brings me to the second scenario we gap down as you guys can see gapping down since mid-july has led to beautiful moves to the downside okay and thank god Despite those gap downs, we still got volatility intraday. Showing love to the day traders. So if we gap down again, especially below 521, that is a big bearish red flag. A big bearish sign. Okay? Now what would I need for bearish follow through? Well, gapping below 521. And of course, breaking down the next support levels. 519.5, 518, 516.5. 515, 513, 511, and the next big fib level at 509. We, we've yet to test that. We could on the next leg down. Are we on the same page here, guys? Do we know when to get bearish? When do we get bearish, uncle? When we drop down below 521 and breaking down 519.5 and 518 would be bearish follow through. What does bears follow through mean? It means to enter puts. You still got to have a stop loss ready because you never know what this market. But it'd be a setup for puts. You play it level to level. If you short 519.5, you take most profit 518 and leave a runner. You short 518, you take most profit 516.5 and you leave a runner. And your runners will go and catch the bigger move if the market decides to give you a bigger move. If the market decides no, you will not get a big move, then guess what? You will cut loss on your stop loss, but you would still be overall profitable because you took profit on the majority of the position already, okay? And as far as being bullish goes, price got to stay above 521 to keep today's recapture intact. And if today's recapture stay intact, that's our sign to be bullish. Now, what is bullish follow through? What is the trigger to go get longs if you're not in longs already if you're in longs already cool but if you're not you want to see the next resistance level clear so if it's above 521 you want to see 523 and 525 clear to put 526.5 528 and 529.5 in play now 529.5 was a buy zone and now it is a sell zone it was a very strong one because it led to a fucking ten dollar move holy moly i'm swearing anyways you want to put a bottom in bulls you want to put some type of bottom in? Y'all got to clear 529.5, and it's not looking like y'all going to do it. Y'all not doing it. Look at this gap down in the aftermarket. This is crazy. Anyways, are we all on the same page, guys? Simplicity, baby. Simplicity. It's the sheep way. Bye. Now, triple Q. Look at me. I'm in the 15-minute chart. Let me go to the daily chart. 
It's capping down 537.8. Holy moly. Um, yeah. It tried. I had a fib level at 443. It tried to clear it intraday. Managed to hit my 445 and 447.5 target. Got selling pressure though. Okay, 443 was a... Uh, you know, a critical fib level, but it couldn't stay above 443. They couldn't clear it. Intraday, they tried, failed. Okay, but look at right now, it's around the 438 is level in the aftermarket. That's actually one of my support levels. But if it fails though, 436, 434 would be a play. You know, with 432, 430, and the fib level at 428.7 ish below. All right, I can't fully get bullish in favor of more upside unless we can get above and close above that 443 level. Triple Q, the Bulls tried it, but it didn't do it. So if they're going to try again tomorrow, they'll have to get above 438. That's a start clear, 440, 441.5 in that FIB level at 443. If they can't, I would be short-term bullish on the Triple Q. Otherwise, it's still looking bearish. It just needs to break down those support levels that I mentioned to trigger more downside. Tesla, we got to talk about Tesla. This is important. It got this big body green candle on Monday. Today, we got some type of doji. Usually, when I see something like this, guys, the third candle is a volatile candle. It's a big candle. Now, some people might think of the evening star pattern or something of that variant. And if that's the case, then the third candle would usually would be a big body red candle, which means it's bear is going to be breaking down support levels, trade with it, make money, go puts. But it can also mean that it could be bullish to the upside. And like I said, the third candle, based on these two candles, is usually a big one. And if it is bullish... The what the bulls need to do one thing they need to do is get a stay above 198.8 that's a fib level clear 200 and they also clear 202 and monday's high which is at 203.8 we can round it to 204. we clear 204 bullish 206 uh 207.5 209 211 213 and 214.6 would all be in play it would be bullish all right, we just got to get above 204. NVDA. Nice, nice. It was some intraday moves, but overall, you know, pretty choppy. Big body green candle yesterday. Choppy day today. Let's see if the third candle will be volatile. If it's bullish, it's got to clear uh, 105.7, 107, 108.3, and 111. Got to clear those levels for NVDA to trigger a move. Back to the upside. The really big level, yeah, is right around 108.3. Okay, 107 and 108.3. Clear those. Bullish, right? As of right now, not looking too bullish because with this, it's gapping down a little bit. It's moving down. Uh, yeah, we break down support at 104 and 102.5. That's bearish, in my opinion. Or if we gap below those, that would be bearish. And the big 100, guys. If we lose the big 100, it's going to be bearish. All right? We gap below it on Monday. But bear, uh, bulls managed to recapture it, you know, intraday. They avoided a daily chart breakdown. So bears need to give us that daily chart breakdown. We break down 100. It's going to get nasty. 97.4, 96, 94, 92.7. Possibly all the way down to 89. Definitely a big possibility. All right, guys. So that is my analysis, aftermarket analysis for my four favorite uh, ticker symbols to trade. Let's take a look at the flows. 522.5, 47% of activity came in at 522.5. This is dark pool orders. This is where the big money are parking their money, buying and selling and getting busy, okay? 24-hour delay, but hey, at least we know uh, where they're interested at. So we use it as a support resistant level as well. But 47% of activity came at 522.5. 39% came at 517.15. Yeah, 2.8 billion around 522.5. And then 2.3 billion at 517.15. All right. Triple Q, 435.5. 17% of activity came around there. 21% of activity came around 439.95. I, I rounded to 440. That's one of my levels. Uh, Tesla, 200.64. I got a 200 level, but market makers, uh, they're doing movement exchanges buying and selling around 200.64 that's what the dark pool shows use that as a support resistance level that's how i do it guys nvda 104.25 i think i had 11 around 104 okay so 
add these levels to your charts all right let's take a look at the option flow filter for 100k premiums or above okay it's bearish uh oh it's bearish short sell the rip sell the rip triple q is bearish they're agreeing they're agreeing guys nvda is always bullish for some weird reason i'd have to take a look more at the context of nvda like what is going on it's always bullish the puts 102 for january 17th for a bunch for august 9th 105 105 a lot of short-term puts august 30th hey guy you guys want me to okay well yeah there's that and they cover nvda nvda is bullish tesla's bearish okay all right there we go guys i hope you guys found value in the video I really appreciate you guys for being here. If you guys, seriously, if you want that extra pair of eyes for the market, definitely join the Sheep's Den. Join Uncle Charters' uh, Discord. Let's be family. All right? I I'll be your extra pair of eyes. For I'll, I'll watch the charts for you. Okay? And I got a lot of friends in my Discord that's been with me for years. And, and they would love nothing to do with make money and help others make money. Because there's so much... There's so much wealth out there. There's, there's no need to be in competition. You know what I mean? There's enough to eat for everyone on this dinner table. And we're sheeps. We're not even greedy. We just want our piece of the pie. Feed our family. Maybe go on vacation two to three times a year. We're not asking for much. Anyways, I hope you guys have a great evening. Peace!